Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature Ear Door. It's late July in far southwest Virginia, and I'm just outside my door. This is my favorite kind of episode to shoot because it brings back the core of my channel, which is sharing about nature that you find, well, right outside your door. So last night, I was actually out with my granddaughter looking for toads that we often find around the house that are attracted by porch lights and window lights for the insects that show up there. Well, instead of finding toads, we were finding pickerel frogs. So this episode today is a share about pickerel frogs and what we learned about them. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So before I show you these pickerel frogs and how to identify them and a little bit about their biology, I want to explain the backstory here and why I think I've got pickerel frogs outdoors all around my house. Well, I'm very, very surprised. So here's the backstory on where I am and why I think these pickerel frogs have been around my house. So just to give you perspective, this is my house. You can see a big open area down there, trees far away. And this is the closest body of water to my house. And yet, the pickerel frogs, I wasn't finding them around the pond here. I'm finding all the pickerel frogs around my house. So the common frog species here in my area are green frogs and bullfrogs. And where I find them, it's always on the margins of ponds and they will feed along those margins, but they always seem to be at least one jump away from the water. So they're very tightly tied to their riparian habitat in the immediate vicinity of the water where they'll go to escape. So the very, very interesting thing to me about these frogs is that they will go to forage a considerable distance from the water. And so these guys acted just like the toads, which of course have a much more terrestrial lifestyle than frogs do. And these guys were around my house 20 to 50 yards away from my little makeshift man-made little pond and 300 to 600 yards away from a stream and another pond. So I was really, really amazed to find how they forage so far away from a water source. Very, very surprising to me. When I was doing my research, I finally found a reference to this in a North Carolina wildlife report on pickerel frogs, and they discussed how far they would also move from water sources. So... After considerable effort, I was able to catch one of these very active pickerel frogs and also this second very small pickerel frog. Normally, I'll try to take the organism I'm looking at, I'll pick them up in my hand or place them on a, a rock and video them, but these frogs are super, super active. They're really fast. They're powerful, powerful jumpers, and I've got to keep them enclosed in the container while filming. I had never seen a pickerel frog up close before, and when I saw this one, at first I thought it must be a leopard frog. But after looking at the maps of distribution and learning more about leopard and pickerel frogs, I figured out that this was, in fact, a pickerel frog. And what makes it look different from a very similar looking leopard frog is these uh, uh, markings on his back. And uh, these frogs tend to, I think, to be a little bit darker than leopard frogs. And you can see that the markings on his back are organized into very distinct rows, where on a leopard frog, the markings are more scattered. And you can see that these markings are very much rectangular shaped 
rather than round shape. So rectangular shape markings in distinct rows rather than round spots uh, scattered define uh, this as a uh, pickerel frog. Pickerel frogs have a very clean white underside and in the backs of the legs and the corners you can see a bright yellow and I was able to uh, grab onto him for a bit and manipulate him a little bit and see that yellow between his legs. That's also the telltale sign that this is a pickerel frog rather than a leopard frog. You can see how small the other pickerel frog is compared to this uh, more or less adult stage. And so this is why I believe with these very small early frogs that those tadpoles that are in that pond right now are in fact pickerel frog tadpoles. And some of the tadpoles are beginning to develop and uh, create legs. And so they'll come out as very small frogs. So here I did a quick net full, quick dip in the pond just to show you some of these tadpoles up close. A couple of them are just starting get legs on them, like this one here who's very, very active. So these are going to emerge as pretty small frogs. I can't po uh, identify these positively. I'm assuming by the size of the pickerel frogs that I'm finding around this pond and around my house and the size of these guys that these are most likely pickerel frogs. So this is circumstantial evidence. I have not been able to ID these with certainty. I'm uh, making some assumptions and uh, we'll keep watching these and see what happens over time and see what adult features these tadpoles start to develop. All right, everybody, back to the pond. Now, once they emerge from the water and become terrestrial and live on land, these uh, frogs will take three to four years to mature into the adult stage. So these frogs have glands on their backs and when they're upset, when they're stressed or feel they're in danger of being eaten, they'll release a toxin across there. And this toxin could potentially be irritating to people's hands. So if you ever picked one up, make sure you don't put your hands in your mouth or uh, in your eyes because you may get a distinct burning sensation. They're not terribly toxic to humans, but they are toxic to other amphibians and reptiles or organisms that might eat them. In fact, I was reading about some biologists who are out collecting amphibians, and they put other amphibians they are collecting in the same bucket with pickerel frogs, and the other amphibians died. And so this uh, secretion they release when they're disturbed can be very, very lethal to other salamanders and other frogs and actually kill them by contact with them in the same container. So I'm going to send these guys off. And I'm right here next to my little pond. And I want you to see what powerful jumpers these guys are and how fast they can go. And I'm going to let them go right here by the water and see what they will do. You want to take off, big guy? Do you want to go in the woods or you want to go in the water? Let's see what this guy does. Yeah, this is the first time. I've definitely, this is really the first time I've ever seen one actually in this water here. They've spent all their time in the terrestrial environment. I often see green frogs on the edge here. I've never seen the pickerel frog here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode on pickerel frogs. And if you're interested in learning more about amphibians and reptiles, check out my amphibian and reptiles playlist. And if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, 
insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.